Hello, this is Don Victor, author of Drawn to Win, host of the podcast Drawn to Win, the director of the Academy of Composition, and the creator of the Core 80 Experience, also known as the C and Grow Rich in Art video course, which you can find out more information at core80.com. This is the Drawn to Win podcast, where I have the incredible privilege to draw artists from around the world into fun and meaningful conversations around art and life, and yes, maybe even a little food. You can hear us each week on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe so you always have a seat among friends. Let's get into the show. All right. Welcome to the show, Mr. Alex. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, um, I'm so happy that I started this podcast thing because I, um, I guess, met you on Facebook um, yeah. probably a couple of years now. Uh, but I'm such a huge fan of your work. Thank you. Uh, th- th- this is like an honor to kind of like talk to you. Um, <laughs> so, so, man, uh, so, so what are you currently working on? Um. Uh, I'm working in a movie right now. I, I can't really say. <laughs> okay. I can't really say much. Um, but I, I was actually there yesterday. I was in Hollywood yesterday, working on uh, some drawings. But it's not. It's nothing like uh, concept art. I'm working like more, more like props for the movie. Really? But, oh, that's uh, cool. Just tell me, is it like a futuristic type of movie or something historical no, or current? It's more like a. I guess it's more like a drama. <laughs> mm. It's like a yeah, yeah. I can't say much. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's fun. It's fun. That's awesome. I'm, I'm uh, you know, sometimes I see these movies where there's a quote unquote artist in the movie, mm-hmm. and I'm like, huh. I wonder who has the job to do all the paintings and drawings and all the stuff that quote unquote the actor artist is doing. Right. Um. And so I have no idea if that's your role or not. <laughs> but, it, they, they, need, they needed something more academic. So uh, my friend who contacted me for the for the work was a, a comic book artist. Mm-hmm. So they asked him first, but he's he, he, he's more into comic books. So he they needed someone more uh, like fine arts mm-hmm. oriented. So I think that's why they contacted me. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. That, congratulations. That's so cool, dude. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Um, so, uh, out, uh, so that's where your primary focus is right now. Yeah. Um, I. It's funny. I I started art school, going to fine arts uh, as major because I wanted to be a concept artist for games and movies, mm-hmm. but. Um, back in the days they weren't any like I, i'm from peru so when i was looking and i've been all south america but when i was looking for schools in there there were no like um concept art you mm-hmm. know or illustrate even illustration that you couldn't find any illustration major schools uh so the closest thing was uh fine arts so that's why i chose fine arts and uh eventually fell in love with uh with oil painting. Beautiful. And I actually hated painting because it was so hard. <laughs> okay. But um, one of my, I think, second, third year, uh, I, 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 we needed to do studies on canvases. And I was so bored of the canvas. And I asked my uh, teacher, hey, can I, uh, can I use a skateboard? Because mm. it's just fun, you know? So they said yes. So I do that. And all of a sudden, I get a an email from uh from the Wall Street Journal that they needed they wanted to do like um I don't know an article about a uh, skateboard painting, and I was like, wow, people actually liked it, so I, I'm gonna stick with painting, you know? Yeah, you know, it's weird. Like you were the first person I saw do that, and now I see so many artists doing it. Um, and because at first when I first saw it, I was like why do those things look like skateboards? <laughs> and, because they were. Uh, now, now, did that kind of evolve out of the idea like of uh, doing artwork on surfboards and then it kind of went to skateboards or? You know, actually, people have been doing that for a long time. And uh, I remember 
there were two influences for that. Uh, there was this artist uh, I, I really love. It's, his name is Ashley Wood. Some some people mm -hmm. I'm sure have heard of him. So he, he's done some work on uh, skateboard paintings, but his work is more more uh, stylized, more like kind of abstract. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was walking down in the museum and I see this very elongated uh, painting, and I, I'm I'm like. Imagine if that would be a skateboard, that would be cool. Because, you know, a very academic way of painting mixed with a, 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 an object like a skateboard. Mm -hmm. That's very contrasting, you know. So I, I thought of, of, of that when I, when I visited. Now, when you paint on a skateboard, do people actually then, like, buy it and use the skateboard? Or, or is it mainly, like, just hung? <laughs> That's the number one question I get. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what I say? I say, like, if the person can actually afford my price i don't care like i think it i, I actually think That's it's a brilliant fun. answer man <laughs> they are uh, they are a couple of uh clients i know that they actually use their skateboard and i think it's awesome because you know for me i see it as you know it's art uh it's i know um what's the word um ephemeris I don't know what I don't know what to call it. You know, it's it's they grind. I don't know. I don't think they'll grind it, but uh, that, mm -hmm. that'll be it's creating more stuff on top of it. You know what I mean? I got you. I got you. I was mm -hmm. doing that. Like it's kind of like um, I guess they call it like French old country French style furniture, where it's like it's painted and then like they intentionally rough it up and to make it look worn and used and yeah. and, get, and gives it character. It adds character to it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, well, that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, what, what was what was your first time like when when you saw someone do that? Were, were you like, oh, that's cool, or, or at first, it, or did you have to go through that process to come to I've, accepting I it? Seen it? I haven't seen it. I, I've okay. been told <laughs> from them, and I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. You know, funny thing is, though, I don't skate. People <laughs> always ask me, like, I don't. I can't skate. I mean, when I was little, I think I. Uh, broke my face or something like <laughs> okay i just like painting them that's nice that's nice you do have a, a little bit of a skater vibe like you, you right know, like you could be <laughs> out there either on that or a harley or something um uh that's cool well i hope that you never actually see anyone skating with your work <laughs> because you might turn into the hawk and realize uh, what the heck am i doing <laughs> right no uh but that's cool man that's cool uh, do you paint on any other um different kinds of surfaces besides canvas and skateboards uh i've tried cups and um right now i'm experimenting have you seen mm -hmm. these little money money uh dolls they're like some dolls like art dolls you buy like diy and then you you paint on top of those dolls nope uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I found some of those, and I was, uh, I'm just trying some new stuff now. But uh, it's mainly yeah, skateboards and and canvas. That's what my my work is really all about. That's cool. And and, and you, if I remember correctly, um, you do a lot of like uh, I want to say like sketching and drawing and like uh, and do you use the moleskin notebooks? I guess they are. Yeah, yeah, I love sketching. Um, big part of a painting uh, is actually drawing. So the more I can practice drawing, the better it helps with my painting. So yeah, Moleskin, I, I really like Moleskin, and uh, uh, actually the the sketches by uh, sketchbooks by Daley Rowney. Uh, they have some uh, cache sketchbooks. Okay, nice. They're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's funny when. Um, working with my daughter uh, when she you know gave her a couple of years to kind of just like fall in love with art and uh and not like overly teach her which was hard for me <laughs> very hard for me um but uh one of the things i would drill in her is before we paint we draw mm -hmm. and uh yeah. and so it's it's funny my, my son now says it we got to draw before we paint <laughs> uh, so so i want to ask you um because you have a little a little person running around that looks exactly like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how is that? How how is that like uh, relationship in in the studio? 
you know, um, it's funny. Like I, I, I do the same thing. I, I try not to push things to him. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I remember my dad pushed a lot of stuff, uh, with me and I'm and like, he, he pushed math. And so I'm, I'm an artist now. <laughs> <laughs> not an architect. <laughs> and so I'm careful. Like, you know what he does? Like he likes drawing and painting, but on the iPad, like he's more mm. digital kind of little guy. So I respect that. Like he, he draws a lot, but it's more on his tablet. Yeah, rather, rather than the actual paint, you know. And, and how old is he? He's gonna be five soon. Wow, really? That's awesome, man. That's very, very cool. Yeah, you know, it was, it was cool because, like, when 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 Sophie was young, I would, you know, I I would try to like work with her, mm-hmm. and she'd kind of get z- zoned out and 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 frustrated. And I was like, oh my gosh, I I was so scared because I was like, if I don't teach or work with her mm-hmm. how is she gonna know you know and then um and then for some weird reason i just had i got this epiphany like well no one ever sat down and taught me like you know yeah. so so i kind of just i told her i said i'm gonna give you to like you're nine <laughs> <laughs> you just fall in love with it do whatever you want and i'll support you and just learn and also what kind of guided me in that is this um in greek mythology <clears throat> uh there's a um a story about Eros, Cupid. And he's this god, and he's like the god of passion. And he falls in love with this human named Psyche, and he pursues Psyche. And Psyche, you know, doesn't really want anything to do with him. She keeps running away. At some point, I don't know if he shot her with an arrow or something, but <laughs> that's a good way of winning, quote-unquote, love. Um, and uh, and at some point, Psyche gives in to this passion, to to this Eros. And they go to marry each other, but because she's a human, they can't. She can't marry. So she goes to this other god, and she transforms Psyche into this—I forget the name of it—but uh, into a demigod. Oh. And so they can get married. And then they have a baby, and the name of the baby—I forget the name of the baby—but it translates into delight. And so it, it, this is one of these little stories I tell at the, my academy that you know you first have to start with the passion. And in from the passion, you pursue knowledge and you pursue knowledge to the point that finally, when you get it, it clicks and it elevates from knowledge to wisdom. And it's when you mix the passion with wisdom Mm -hmm. that you're actually able to create something that's very delightful and quote unquote unique and different and wonderful and and. And so using that framework, I realized I had to give my kid, both of them now, an opportunity to kind of just fall in love with it, just yeah. the passion of it. And, uh, and at some point, you know, uh, we'll get into the knowledge and then at some point that knowledge will turn into a wisdom and they'll, they'll just have pure power and authority. Uh. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um. I teach grown up, uh, I'll say grown up kids. Grown up uh, kids, that's awesome. Because uh, they already they already know what they're aiming for, right? But mm-hmm. I, I teach young kids too. But I think that's harder because of that. Because of of uh, you have to um, um, be very careful for them not to lose that passion because it's mm-hmm. you know, it's hard um, to say you know oh. Like you, like your daughter, um, you trying to teach her something very direct, and that that might be uh, kind of too harsh for her, and yep. she might like uh, get scared, and you'll lose that spark, right? Mm-hmm. So you, it's, it's it's more difficult for me. I have less experience with the younger kids, but um, but I think that's that's it. That's it. we 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 understand each other right now. <laughs> so. Yeah, it it gives you patience uh, is the key, and um. You know, I remember I had a, a friend from Puerto Rico and, and he was having a son, uh, uh, Paulo. Mm-hmm. And he would say, oh, man, I can't wait. The Paulo's like five years old and I can go fishing with him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm like, wow, man, like he has to wait five years before he can really engage with his son 
at that level that he really wants to. Um, now, I mean, obviously he can change diapers and, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and giggle and laugh and wrestle with the baby and things like that. Um, but I've always found it interesting how nature kind of has this weird uh, um, pattern where the earlier the child, it's really the mother who is in those early, early years that's very crucial. Yeah. Um, and I guess in a way the, the father's uh, uh, function is really to protect that unit, right? Um, but then at some point when that kid turns somewhere between, you know, five seven eight and and it's like they're like a little like a little human being like a little person Mm -hmm. (laughs) um then it's like the father then takes over and begins to really develop and train that child now i'm sure there's a ton of people who will hate what i just said but i really don't give a shit um (laughs) so you just turn it off and we can have our conversation (laughs) but uh um and so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's for me right now, I have a seven year old and a 10 year old and it's just getting really exciting to like, see, see this time where I get to download into them. Like, like now, um, where before I just had to kind of like, you know, like you said, just keep that flame going. And, um, so I, I'm sure your son, man, uh, that flame, <laughs> I can I can see because of the environment that you create, um, th- that you're. I can already see twenty years from now your son being very very powerful, very very powerful. Uh, and, we uh, are we're we're kind of hip hip as, uh We and my wife we um mm-hmm. we're very open about stuff and mm-hmm. uh, like especially like like my house. We come here and you'll see newts and all mm-hmm. the walls <laughs> beautiful I, man and 90 percent of my models they're all, all my wife's friends and mm-hmm. they're always here so like he he doesn't have those um taboos about nudity and stuff like that exactly. like, he's very open like i even take him to the figure drawing sessions like he's there and when the model is gone like he's like oh it's my turn and he just sits in the couch <laughs> nice so yeah you know, it's in, it's beautiful. You know, my 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 ex wife, she was from Guatemala, and there was a dance that she would do called punta. I think it's called mm-hmm. punta, right? And that thing, <laughs> I wasn't raised in Latin culture. I was like raised in like in foster homes, and primarily with white white folk. Yeah, and they don't dance like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was so strange to see her dancing and she would dance with her uncles like that right and and it and i knew there was nothing going on obviously but but it was so what we would call you know this puritan mentality called sexual right and we would talk about it and and it was funny her one uncle who got who was married to uh an american italian girl basically a white girl uh and she was married they were married for, I think, probably 30 years now. And she still don't get it, right? <laughs> like She's like, I don't I can't watch it. Um, and one day it hit me because it's like sitting in a life drawing class. Like when you're, when you're drawing from the model, you're not thinking sexual thoughts. It's uh, you're looking at a naked woman or male or mm-hmm. them together, but it, there's no fantasy there's no sexual uh energy being put onto it it's it you're much more like engrossed in the study and the uh in this communication or, or depending on how where you are at that that level um and so i totally get what you're saying in terms of bringing your little guy in there and having that experience you know uh where someone on the outside might judge you because yeah. of their ignorance or, or lack of experience or just the, uh, you know, the, the, well, their small mindedness, you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, we're all, all, we're all different. So we're all, we have to learn how to live in harmony with everyone. So mm. It's free word. Tolerance is the, I think the key here, but uh, I, ha- yeah, I have to touch on that subject that, the misconception about like 
figure drawing being something sexual. Like I, I, I'm, and I'm just tired of messages. Like I, I mm-hmm. get DMs every time. Like, oh, your sexual life must be like amazing having all these girls. I'm like, they are my models. <laughs> they are. That's that's all they are. Uh, and even even an artist, I'm surprised. And I'm like, are you an artist, bro? Like. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, I went to this uh, one gallery show and it was like all these photographers, primarily photographers. And it was very strange because there was a lot of nudes, mm-hmm. but you could tell, you could tell uh, like 80% of these artists that were, were photographing nudes, the greatest amount of work that they did was convincing a girl to pose naked. Right, or maybe scrounging up the money to find a model off one of those websites. Yeah, um, like that was their great accomplishment. But there was that ten to twenty percent of artists who mm-hmm. they were past that, and they were actually making art. They were the way they were focused on the compositions. They were focused on the storytelling. They were focused on yeah. you know the, the style, the you know what they were communicating, and it was really beautiful because oftentimes those artists, they were extracting an image or something out of this model that Mm -hmm. sometimes at first you didn't even realize it was a model. You might've thought it was a landscape or some type of beautiful abstraction. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh my God, it's a person. Right. Um, So I totally get, you know, there's a a immaturity um, that, that, that will pop up and, um, and there's also a fantasy around it, you know, because a lot of times people have this fantasy that, you know, artists are just always, you know, doing their models. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something interesting, though, that I just realized a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of female work. Uh, most of my models are uh, ladies. And, um, yeah, there's this uh, guy draws girl thing because we like girls. But um, then I, I met like other friends, uh, other artists who also are into pinup, uh, mm-hmm. pinup girls. Um, and there are girls, uh, girl artists that draw girls, not necessarily because they like girls, but because the female shape is very um, elegant. You know, even I have gay friends that are artists that do uh, also, they, they keep using the female figure because the female figure is just more elegant, you know? It's like when you compare, you know, the birds, you know how the male birds, their, mm-hmm. feather, their feathers are more like flamboyant and more mm-hmm. colorful. They're just a, a pretty design, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's what happens with us, you know? I think the female form is much more elegant. And it's not just because... I'm a guy and I like girls and it's just because the shapes are, and people that do not share my, uh, my, um, I would say sexuality mm-hmm. uh, agree with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that was very interesting, you know, cause I, I was thinking, Oh, you know, behind all this news, there's, there's always like this feeling of, of, uh, what we were talking about, you know, sexuality mm-hmm. or whatever. And there, and, there, and there may actually, well, no, not may actually, there is. There's a part of the of, of sexuality behind it, at mm-hmm. least in the beginning parts. Um, but you do evolve out of that and there, you, you yeah. come into a higher consciousness. And yeah. I absolutely agree um, with the female figure. It's just incredible. I, I just love, you know, when we're, when we're drawing that contour or that mm. line, it's just kind of a, a, it's it's a documentation of what's going on in our mind, yeah. and and so there's a tremendous um, you know actually uh, there's a tremendous experience when the eye knows how to look. Um, you know, I, I, I heard of a survey, I mean, a survey, a study years ago, and I I believe it was it was true. I don't think it was a joke. But they were saying men can decrease the chances of a heart attack by staring at breasts, <laughs> right? I, I guess you've heard of yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think it's, yeah. Right. And, and, you know, 
on the surface, it sounds like, oh, yeah, you know, now we have a license to look at boobies, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but from the artist's perspective, it's not the boob, mm-hmm. right, that you're looking at. It may be that the eye that is tracing these curves, right, and these inner circles and things like that, um, that uh, – and then you have two of them that you're 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 tracing with your eyes, and it may trigger a, a, a certain sense of peace or calm, yeah. de-stressing you. And it's not the breast itself; it's just uh, the design. Yeah, the design. There's, it's got more rhythm, you know. It's yeah. more elegant. And uh, I mean, men, we can make. Uh, graceful drawings uh, and elegant drawings of men but it's just harder you know it's yeah. the female shape is just much more easier for that no but, but <laughs> i've gotten myself in trouble several times uh because sometimes you you, you kind of you see somebody and your eye begins to draw them right and you get lost in a, a highlight or a, a shoulder or whatever mm-hmm. and you kind of just like drift off in your or maybe like a hip or whatever yeah and uh, and then they turn around and they catch you staring at them, right? So it's horrible, but it's even more horrible when you do that with a male. <laughs> They're like, yeah, what, yeah. what you looking at, man? I'm like, oh, sorry, man. Uh, the angles of your back. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We artists, we do that all the time. And it's, I think it's awesome that we're able to like uh, just get loose in our minds, you know? Mm-hmm. In their eyes, let's say. And if anybody wants to know, if you don't understand what we're talking about, there is a movie. Um, I'm going to say his name wrong, but I'm going to pronounce his name the way I pronounce his name, Modili Gianni. Oh. Um, but I, I know I'm, I'm adding a couple syllables in there, but I don't care. Uh, but there's a movie with Modili, uh, about Modili Gianni. Um, and uh, who's the actor? He's a Spanish actor who plays him. But that movie, I think, may be the best movie to get insight into the artist's mind. Um, there are moments where, you know, he'll walk in and he'll just like grab this lady's head, you know, and just angle it. And just to kind of get the way the light hits her neck, right? And mm-hmm. it's like, she doesn't exist. She's just a line that he's caught, right? Mm-hmm. Um and he does this one thing when he's smoking, he'll blow out the smoke and he'll kind of like wait, like circle his arm, like his hand through the smoke. Like he's catching not the smoke, but the, the design of the smoke. Yeah. And, and there's just these little things throughout the movie that really gives you insight into how we see and, and how we engage. And, and a lot of times when, when we do those kinds of things, we're considered strange, weird, or whatever. And it's not that we're strange, weird, or whatever. It's just that we're experiencing life, in my opinion, in a far more sensual, intimate way. And uh, and then we've learned to have the courage not to to bottle it away, you know. And uh, and so I look yeah. at, like you, man, you're like brain I mean- <laughs> We're we're kids. I mean, an artist is a kid, mm. grown up kid. So, have you seen kids like they just get fascinated by mm-hmm. the stupid sounds they make with their mouths? It's the same thing. I mean, we that's the ability to be uh, able to be awed by something so simple. Mm-hmm. I think it's what makes life great. You know, indeed, indeed. Wow, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, it's true. It's it's true. Kids, big kids, growing up kids, that's who we are. <laughs> so talking about kids, like um when did, did you start drawing as a kid? Oh man, uh, if, ever since I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. I remember asking my mom, like, hey, can you draw can you draw this like transformer guy? <laughs> <laughs> and she couldn't, so I'm like, oh, I have to do it myself. And so I, I remember that. That's been my first Get memory. away. Let me do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I think it, it's, there's, I think there's something there. Um, you know, you're talking about Transformers as a kid. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's love for drawing came because I drew um, mm-hmm. Elmo. She was obsessed oh, with Elmo. Nice. 
and she freaked out. And I, I knew I was going to plant the, 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 the seed of loving art. Uh-huh. I knew the very moment. I think I actually have it on, uh, recorded. And I sat her down and I, and I knew if I, if I drew this little character that in her mind, in her little world, Elmo was everything. Yeah. That's but, awesome. if, but if I could make it come out of paper and have the, the, the power to make my best friend appear <laughs> mm-hmm. out of nothing, and uh, she freaked out, man. Mm-hmm. And she just, she hasn't stopped drawing since she was two years old, you know, just, just very you know? cool. Very cool. Yeah. And, uh, and even when I was a kid, like my first experience with uh, like winning at drawing was um, uh, I drew this little character out of a biscuits uh, cartoon book. Mm-hmm. And uh, and everybody's like, what? And so I think there's, you know, there's something about that having a connection to something as a kid and yeah. then trying to draw it mm-hmm. and, that, that makes that connection for us, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so, you, so you asked your mom to help you. She couldn't. <laughs> you kicked her to the side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's, a, <laughs> um, so w- what happened next? Like, how did you begin to develop and really pursue this thing? Uh, since I was a kid, I was like, they they used to ask me like when I was three years old or something like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> I didn't know the rest of the story, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm going to be an artist. And, and yeah, I've always had that in mind. I was terrible with numbers, of course. And, um, but I love drawing. I love drawing everything. I remember, you know, how you're a kid, you put your drawings in the, in the fridge of your mm-hmm. mom, mom's mm-hmm. fridge. So when I was, I think five or four, I don't know, I made so many drawings. Like it was the whole kitchen, like the whole uh, walls. Wow. Was, they really? were covered with drawings. That's awesome. <laughs> Even the ceiling. Yeah. It was, I was fascinated by drawing. So I That's always awesome. drew your mom's like, awesome, man. Yeah, they were very supportive. That's, yeah. yeah, very supportive. Like, hey, let's tape this onto the ceiling now. <laughs> uh, like, you know, you normally you get the refrigerator. You have to share it with the other yeah, siblings. Yeah. Um, and then uh, at some point, like, it just starts going on top of each other. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't go off the refrigerator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, so when did you draw your first female do you remember that experience when you drew your yeah. first female? Yeah, of course. Very, very lively. Uh, uh, this was back in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, my father was an engineer, so he traveled a lot. So uh, back then, we were in Mexico, so I was in Mexico. And they started art school in there. And so um, I remember going to the classroom, and I was late, actually. And, and so I opened the, the, the classroom door, and everyone's drawing this lady. Mm-hmm. And but everyone's just like so professional, like so quiet. It just kicks in, you know. It just kicks in, and like you said, like if if there was any sexual thought, you would be losing your time and not making a drawing. So yep. it just it was just so natural, you know. So it just flew. Now in that quietness, mm-hmm. did you have the experience when there was a new person who came into that space? And they dropped their pencil. <laughs> How's that? Like I'm, I'm drawing and they hear someone drop their pencil? Yeah. <laughs> like they just drop their pencil on the ground because they got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's always... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. They, they, I don't know. They were all like machines. Like they were all like doing their thing. So I'm oh, like, okay. oh, hey. so I got to do the same thing, you know? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to remember like, we would have uh, drawing classes, life drawing classes, and you could have a 12 year old in there or an 82 year old in there. Oh, wow. And, um, and I, I just remember this young boy coming in. It was his first night, you know. Mm-hmm. He drops his pencil. <laughs> like, uh huh. Get focused, boy. Get focused. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I, I read um, in. Norman Rockwell's uh, autobiography, he was talking about the model. Oh. And uh, he said, um, back in the day when they had models, mm-hmm. uh, they would put 
blindfolds over their eyes huh. because um, they had this belief that, y- you know, um, you could draw the figure. Mm-hmm. But if you looked into a naked woman's eyes, it was as if you were having sex with her. <laughs> well, I can I can see why. I can understand why they say that. Indeed, right? Mm-hmm. So, that, so expound on that. Like, why why can you see that? I guess uh, the connection. Uh, it sounds much more deep, actually. Um, you know how they say the, the eyes are the window mm-hmm. to the soul and all this romantic talk and uh it just it kind of makes sense on that way you know indeed indeed i remember uh our first year in college uh my buddy anwar and i were uh trying to figure this thing out and so we're looking at porn and we're looking at <laughs> artwork and we're like they're both naked so what why why is one different than the other and we we realize it, it comes to the eyes like the intention is being poured through the eyes the positions are exactly the same. I remember seeing a meme on, on Facebook. It was this guy in front of, of a naked girl. Mm-hmm. And the first image, it was it said pervert. But then it was another image, the, the same image, but the guy had an easel in front. And it was like artist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's beautiful. So now I, I need to I need to go into this part of the conversation with mm-hmm. you. We're, we're we're into the models. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you, as an artist, we have the authority. And actually, if we, I would dare to say that if we don't tap into this authority, mm-hmm. then we may not actually be artists. And the authority is the authority to exaggerate. It's to emphasize. It's to edit and and. Mm-hmm. It's to compose and to design and, and create the, your impression of what you see. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the signatures of your figures is that they are very voluptuously wonderful. Um, yeah. Where, where, when, when did you decide that that was the route that you wanted to go and that was important for you? I personally like curvy women a lot, mm-hmm. but um, it's funny. I'm living, I have five years, almost five years living here in Bakersfield. And ever since I moved here, like never before I had like so many girls offered to be models. And mostly all these girls, they are curvy girls. Hmm. And well, I'm not going to say no, of course. I mean, and, and so now, you know, I'm, I get people say me, you know, thank you, Alex, for for drawing real women, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and not making like uh, the the typical like, like athletic and very thin girl, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it was not my intention to make it like, uh, you know, make make that move. It, it was just like I really like Kirby women. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, I'll add even some uh, cellulite in there and stretch marks or whatever. Like, I think everything is beautiful, you know? Beautiful, yeah. So these girls show, I, I draw them as they show. Like, I even had this crazy lady saying, oh, you take the hairs off there, you know? <laughs> you take the what? You take the hairs off their things, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, you are, I'm, I'm like, lady, I'm just drawing them as they show it to me you know i don't take hairs or put hairs i just do them as they show and uh and yeah i mean uh, really i've been getting a lot of of messages from girls saying thank you for doing kirby girls thank you for uh you 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 inspire me you encourage me Mm. i think that's beautiful i mean I, i i'm really glad um I like Kirby girls, so that's why I started doing Kirby girls too. So my wife is is one of uh, my main models too. She's mm-hmm. Kirby, and uh, I guess I'm now known as the Kirby artist. Like, yeah, Kirby. <laughs> oh, no. 
and and you do it it's beautiful because there's a fantasy to it in your work like it looks fantasy right and yet it looks very very real like um in the sense of not like oh it looks like a photo reel mm -hmm. but it, it looks like um it's real in the sense of it, the experience like you're, mm -hmm. you're it's it's honest and it's actually almost an exaggeration of the honesty mm -hmm. which and yet it always turns out to look very beautiful and i and i can understand why women would come to you and, and you know because you're validating them you're 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 allowing them to uh stand naked with you know uh, with their chest out <laughs> um yeah. but with with pride and confidence as they are at this time there's a revelation there's uh for the canon of of what's beautiful of a beautiful woman you know the canon is kind of changing i guess mm -hmm. i'll give that to the kim kardashians <laughs> or whatever we're doing that. <laughs> nice um but yeah it's definitely changing and, and you are seeing more and more kirby women out there um mm -hmm. i think like this model I, I really like your name is stefania ferrario Fer mm -hmm. ferrario or Italian model. She's very famous on, on Instagram and Facebook. Anyways, but more and more you see Kirby woman and, and Kirby being the more standard uh, canon of beauty now, I think it's it's coming back, you know, because before, way before uh, these women were were what what the beautiful thing was. Like you go back to uh um Raphael and uh, mm -hmm. the old masters and that's like when I was a kid, I used to see uh, art books, like old master art books, and and I'll be like, wow, these women are beautiful. And I think that's why I get the my uh, my like my liking of Kirby girls. I think mm -hmm. it's from from the Renaissance time, or I don't know, you know. Well, uh, yes, it's from the Renaissance time. It's also, I, I would dare to say, just true nature. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just the true nature. I mean, the reality is most women think that guys are fascinated in love with these supermodels and, and Hollywood actresses. And, and it's bullshit. The guy yeah, would, most is. guys rather make love to the, their friend next door than, yeah. you know. Uh, and, and the truth is, even though women don't want to admit it, a lot of these standards have nothing to do with men because men don't have standards. Just are you breathing? Are you alive? Do you, do you yeah. say hi to me? Um, <laughs> you know, but a lot of these standards are really women competing with women, not, not men. And uh, yeah, it gets to that point. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, I think uh, your, your work is doing an incredible service uh, for, for women um and by putting it out there on such a frequent basis uh you're going to you know you you have to you're going to get that that wave of immaturity you're also going to get that wave of um uh let's say sexual immaturity right you're mm -hmm. also going to get that wave of uh i'm going to say emotional spiritual immaturity like oh yeah. my gosh you know like like in all honesty I really don't care if my kids see a, a naked person on a TV, mm -hmm. right? Because the only thing wrong about the naked person is the fact that we made it wrong. <laughs> like, of course. It, yeah. it, you know, it's like, you know, you're looking at what God made, nature, design, whatever, and you're saying it's wrong, it's evil, it's, it's whatever. And it just, it's just one of the stupidest, things that you can ever imagine i just don't get it um and and as artists we have that uh that cool privilege to kind of just share light on that and and just honor it for as for what it is it's just beautiful yeah when you create taboos uh with kids or society you 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 make them want it more you know Mm -hmm. <laughs> true so true I, I think that's one of the parts where it actually fails yeah it's it's interesting when it comes to parenting one of the um you know uh like people like oh this is a curse word you know mm -hmm. i said what the hell is that or something my son's like oh 
Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's stepdad doesn't like him saying crap or whatever, right? So, <laughs> but, I, but I tell yeah. my kids, I was like, there's only two curse words in my house. I would rather hear you say the F word than mm-hmm. to say that I can't or I'm bored. Like to me, like I punish my kids. I, I'll put them in the naughty seat if they say I can't do this or if they ever say I'm bored. Like, <laughs> like those two words are forbidden in my that's, presence. That's, you know? that's, that's good though. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> Everything else can be done with moderation. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, uh, sex things like that like i don't think they need to be afraid of a, of, of a form now i'm not i'm not gonna be putting them out you know in front of people <laughs> sex and stuff they won't yeah, get that you know yeah. um but uh <clears throat> but yeah man it, it's it, I, i'm so glad that as artists we have um that freedom to explore these ideas and um so let, let me ask you man uh so this is what you're doing. Where do you see yourself, you know, in five years in your studio? I want, I want to ask you that two, two, twofold. One, as, as, a, as an artist, mm-hmm. um, and then also as a father. Hmm. All right. Um, well, I, I like what I'm doing, which is I'm painting, I'm teaching, and um. Uh, I'm creating, creating more art. Uh, it's the best thing. I mean, um, I don't want to get involved in too many projects because mm-hmm. I, I, I like my time for doing my personal work. And I think that's the thing with most artists. Like whenever you get a job that's paying good money, mm-hmm. uh, then you start losing that, that time. And then you start getting depressed. Like I have so many friends, like they're working for Warner brothers or, or Disney or stuff like that. They they are happy because they're getting paid good money. Mm-hmm. But then I talk with them and they sound depressed because yep. they are not having time for their own projects. With I think for artists, it's really a very important part of who you are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I I always want to keep a balance. So. I love teaching. I love painting. So I see myself um, just teaching more mm-hmm. and uh, painting more. Uh, I used to be a headmaster back in Peru for an art school. So oh, cool. Right here, I'm just teaching one-on-one or a small group every time I have a chance. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, teaching is something I actually found I am passionate about. And uh, I, I would I, I love to be doing that like more and more. I want to uh, talk to you about the teaching um, mm-hmm. in a um, in a, in a second. Yeah. Uh, when you were saying about the friends, you know, uh, working, and mm-hmm. so they're making good money, but they seem yeah. depressed. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting. They have this saying about starving artists. You know, well, oh, you don't want to be an artist because you're gonna you're gonna starve. Yeah. And uh, and that always rubbed me weird. Um, and I think there's a truth in that, like anything that you get passionate about, if you're not wise about, you can end up starving for, (laughs) um, but a lot of the artists that I, that I deal with, that's not their issue. They're not starving, Mm -hmm. but what they are is they're artistically starving because either they're become, even as a fine artist, sometimes you could become a slave to a style or something you become known for. Mm-hmm. You know, um, oh, you know, you 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 paint incredible vases, yeah. and the galleries keep buying the vases or whatever, right? And all of a sudden, now you just become this production machine to sustain your life. You're yeah. producing this stuff, but you're dying inside because, you know, yeah. that's not what you want to do. But that you know, that's what it sells. So yeah, and it's hard. It's hard, and it's fearful. Because, you know, if it stops selling, then what <laughs> you lose your everything, you know? It's like... Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I actually took a break from doing the skateboards, like a five-year break or something like that. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted to just focus on painting itself and not just, you know, the product that it's mm-hmm. the skateboard painting that people like. 
and yeah, it's like your shadow. Mm-hmm. You, you you are your own uh, your your own enemy. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I mean, art is hard. I mean, it's and like any other job. I mean, no one, everyone's gonna tell you. There's a saying: everyone is gonna tell you how hard being an artist is, but they don't tell you how hard it is to be an associate at I don't know Ross or Walmart. Mm-hmm. whatever you know it's 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 hard job I mean, you if you want to get that money you gotta work hard i mean when you're working for yourself you know who's your boss you don't have a boss because everyone's your boss <laughs> <laughs> that's the trick i mean you're like oh you know i can't wait to quit my job so i am i am my own boss that's bs though because everyone's gonna be your boss everyone you gotta um get those clients you know mm-hmm mm-hmm and it's not hard. I mean, hard work is there always, you know, always, always. always. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's, <laughs> I always tell people that's why they call it art work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're, if you're not working and you're just making art, that's all you're doing. I am making art, but, <laughs> but there's a difference between art and artwork. Uh, but um, so as a teacher, uh, you know, there's always this idea that uh, people teach because they can't do. Mm-hmm. And um, and I can see where people get that from, right? Yeah. You know, some people fall back because they couldn't be successful at this, so this is what they did. Um, but I also get irritated with that because for some of us, we actually have a gift at at, at leading people through a process that, that opens them up and gets them to advance and, and become – a greater version of who they are. And, and to me, that's what teaching is, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you're, you're, you know, and so there's some of us who become very passionate about teaching and we, we, we can do. And, uh, and so I wanted to just have a conversation around that with you. Like what, what are your thoughts on teaching and, and, um, and why do you teach? Yeah. Um, I love teaching. Uh, I started teaching by accident, actually. Uh, I had a friend who had an art school, and one of the teachers, one of the drawing teachers, was absent that day. Hmm. And I, I, I lived very close by, and he was like, hey, you know, come over and, and just fill in for a moment. <laughs> and so um, I had many bad teachers when I was a student. I had many, many bad teachers. And I... It just, I hated that because I, you know, I, I had this question, like, you know, simple thing, you know, when you're a student, you have so many questions mm-hmm. and when you ask a teacher and you know, he doesn't know the answer, it's like you die inside. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Or like he's, he's making stuff up and you know, he's making stuff up and like, no, <laughs> you're not. And I had so many of those and I was like, I put my foot down. I'm like, I'm not going to be a bad teacher. I'm mm. gonna, I'm not going to be those guys. I'm not going to be a, the teacher that's there just to get the paycheck and be gone, you know? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be a good teacher. So when that chance came, I felt this heavy weight on my shoulders. And I'm like, no, I got to be good, you know? So I guess my, uh, it's like you become like a parent to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, exactly. So yeah, I, I'm very passionate. Like I, I, I try to be the best I can, and and teaching does make you a better artist. You learn more for, for, uh, from your students than, than sometimes they learn from you. What were um, you were saying that with the bad teachers, like mm-hmm. when they were bullshitting you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was one or two other things that you, you observed that made a teacher a bad teacher? Well, I, I gotta, I gotta mention though. Um, so I, I, my, I went to fine arts school and Mm -hmm. fine arts these days. Uh, I don't know if it's like this anymore. I'm sure it is. They're all about the concept, conceptual art, uh, installation happening, Mm -hmm. all this new, new, uh, contemporary art that uh i mean it's very cool i love it but when you go to an art school and you tell them hey i'm here because 
I want to know how to draw and how to paint. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they try to push you these ideas that that's not cool anymore. So you should be doing these other things instead, like installation and performance or whatever. Mm -hmm. So because they did that, and uh, I, I was kind of furious. I was like, no, I, I still want to draw and paint. Like, I want to learn that. Where do I go for that? <laughs> and and so they hire most all these teachers that, that they weren't painters. They were more this kind of, they it did this kind of art, which is like what I mentioned, like installation. Mm -hmm performance so of course they're not painters and so um you get this this conflict going on so i think that's one of the reasons why i had these type of teachers makes a lot of sense man <laughs> you know what i mean you know what yeah I mean? yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's uh um you know i always see it like for about the last hundred years, uh, there's been a breakdown in the art education. And sadly, the, the, a lot of the teachers today, mm -hmm. it's not even their fault that they, that they don't teach because most mm -hmm. of them just don't even know that they don't know. Yeah. You know and, and then we built this culture that, um, you know, it, it was funny when I went to art school, you, you meet students in they're in art school and they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a photographer because I can't draw or mm -hmm. I'm uh, into computer art because I can't draw. And I would just scratch my head and I would say, well, how, how would you expect to be good at any of those things if you can't draw? Like if you can't think visually, you know, with a pencil. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it, it was like I was told at a young age, like when you go um, – apply at Disney. They don't really care if you have great concepts. They just want to know, do you know how to draw? You know, <laughs> they'll teach you how to think like they do and they'll teach you how to do their styles, but they just need to know that you actually have that foundation and, yeah. and, and concept art is cool and all, but without a foundation, it, it, <laughs> I, I, I get angry about it, to be quite honest, because I think it's just a system that is um, bamboozling and, and conning uh, a lot of people out of a lot of money and, and, and a lot of time. You know, I was having this conversation with, with John Mahoney. John Mahoney is an amazing artist. He teaches at uh, ColorArts. Hmm. And uh, he mentioned drawing is the base of everything. And it makes sense, you know, when you have an idea, even if you are a film director or, mm -hmm. or whatever, like you, if you draw your, your first idea, even if it's like stick figures, mm -hmm. put it down on the paper, it's there and more is going to be added to that. Like when you have a drawing, you see more things that you, you were not seeing at first just because just by seeing it or by writing it, you know, mm -hmm. but when you draw it, even if it's a bad drawing, you'll start seeing more and more. And it's just more flexible, I think. Yeah. It, it gives you uh, an authority over, you know, let's say like a photographer. Mm -hmm. A photographer will go out and then they're just waiting for it to happen, right? Mm -hmm. They're waiting for that moment. They're waiting for, or a plain air painter, right? They'll go out and they're just waiting for that moment that that right light or whatever, right? They just set up and it sounds okay. The problem is, is you become a victim of the circumstance. So you don't have a good painting because the light wasn't right, or you don't have a good photo photograph because, you know, the thing didn't come out. And when you draw and you take control and you realize that you have the authority to emphasize and, and edit and to stretch and to exaggerate and to leave things out and to put things in. Like you have this ability to be inspired by your environment, but ultimately, you know, create and compose your own impression of it. Mm -hmm. um, now you're in control. You you are the one who's creating. You're the king of this moment, not not the uh, 
the elements. passive, you know, thing that's, you know, that's happening. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I think that's where drawing becomes super important because it just builds such a confidence in, in your ability to really see and then, mm-hmm. and then ultimately make something that other people can enjoy. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a good base. So people yeah. should be drawing more. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Um, so as a father, where, where would you like to see your, your relationship with you and your, your son in five years or five to 10 years? I'll say five years. Five years. Um, you know, it's crazy because I take my son to the cons. I go to Comic-Con mm. a lot. Mm-hmm. I actually have a booth with some friends at, at the San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, sometimes I take him with me and I'm, I just ask my my wife, you know, like, this guy's life is cool. Because, like, imagine being a, like a four-year-old, three-year-old three kid, like, going to a convention and see all these people dressed up like heroes. It's just like a fantasy, right? Like, mm-hmm. ongoing. So I, I love taking him places like that like taking him to the figure drawing um i know i i don't know he's he's my partner like i i love doing all this like art stuff with him even though he really doesn't want to like paint with physical paint Mm -hmm. he's not very interested and i don't want to push that but he likes the digital stuff so uh i don't know like anything oh he likes music he likes singing a lot i actually Uh, play some music i i play the keyboard and uh, so any projects that uh, he would like to do, like I-, I would love to be part of that and just have a great collaboration with my son, like at, at anything like that. I think that's what I, anything he wants to do, I'd like to support that like 100%, of course. It's awesome, man. That's awesome. As long as he's not like an engineer or something. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <be> like abuelo. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Who knows? He may he may go in that direction. Yeah. You know? He um, likes reading a lot, so that, that might be I might switch. I would throw an encouragement too. Oh, I'm gonna give you an encouragement as a dad. Okay. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. just for the audience uh who's dealing with children, um the medium is not what's important. Mm-hmm. Because right now what he's learning, uh, and this is if you watch like kids who sing or do anything when they're younger, really, really look at them. It's like what, what's really going on is you, as a, as a human, we're like a tuning fork. And there's this vibration in the air that's going on. Mm-hmm. And then what we're doing is adjusting to it. And when we're drawing, a lot of times what we're really doing is kind of tuning in and then uh, having almost like a download. And if you focus on the medium, like, oh, he should be drawing with pencils and brushes. Mm -hmm. It's like, then you missed the point. The point is he's downloading. He's tuning in to Mm -hmm. his surroundings. He's engaging in this nonverbal experience. He's interpreting and he's, and he's, he's like allowing himself to force this energy through his interpretation through a medium whatever the medium is and if if you can see that and and allow that to occur frequently then he'll become very very intuitive very insightful uh very aware Mm -hmm. um one of the things i do with my children is um I was raised in a church, so there was this uh, concept called speaking in tongues, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so I'll speak in tongues to my kids, you know. So I'll tell them to do something. I'll be like, <laughs> right? Or if they yeah. piss me off, I I get angry in tongues, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if I love them, I you know I'll say shalom <laughs> right? Uh, it, and uh, and they they they've heard it enough that they know how to react. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll tell them to go get me something, but I'll say it in tongues and they'll go and get it. Right. Uh And the reason why I do this is because I'm trying to get them 
so in tuned with energy and frequency and people and surroundings that they don't need to hear the words that people say, but they Mm -hmm. perceive the energy. Um, Having a daughter, I do this with her a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, because men will come as she gets older and say lots and lots of pretty words to her. And she needs to be able to discern the energy, the attitude, the spirit behind what people are doing. Um, And as a creative, you know, if you, if you're dealing with an art director or a client um, and they're, they're trying to use words to articulate what it is that they're feeling, but you're able to really like get past their words and really harness what they feel, that energy. Yeah. And what you produce, it just, bam, it resonates with them. And, they, and they'll come, oh, how'd you know, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so, again, the medium isn't important. When, when we realize that as the artist, we are the medium, not, not the tools that we use. And, and, uh, and so I love the fact that you're allowing your son that space to just experience this, this, this connection. You know, mm-hmm. and and not telling him, do not do it this way, or don't do it that way. You don't do it this way, and because all yeah. those things add doubt in the, in the child. Yeah, and, yeah. Of course, you know, if he comes and has a question, I I'll be more more happy more than that. Indeed. Hey. And then my my little encouragement to you, uh, Mr. Yeah. Alex, is that <clears throat> as a parent, something I, I figured out was. We, what we do with our children today will manifest in about five to seven years, Mm -hmm. right? So realizing that you have a a power to um, intentionally engage with your child now that molds them for five to seven years from now. So for example, my daughter is 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I know... In five years, she's going to be into what? Boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> knowing that between five and 15 and 17, she's going to, you know, really be like digging dudes. Um, How old is she now, you say? She's 10. Okay. So now, obviously, she's, going, she's starting to get into that now, right? But, mm-hmm. but she's in that young young yeah. stage um so when she was five i uh, we we would always like um we would call it todd this 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 future boyfriend relationship she would have we would call him todd and uh we we, we called him todd long before she was born it was something my my ex-wife and my wife at the time we saw in a movie we're like oh my god that's what she's gonna be like (laughs) so we have to watch out for todd you know (laughs) and uh um and 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 so now what i'll do is i'll hold her hand you know i'll sit next to her i'll when we're in the car she'll be in the front seat and i'll let her lean on me or whatever and i do and i let those moments occur and sometimes i'll even initiate them so that in five years, when she's sitting in a car at 16 or whatever, with a, with a little guy or whatever, mm-hmm. she already knows what that feels like and what that should feel like from someone who has a pure intention, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's good. And so I'm strategically, intentionally designing in her an experience at 10 years old that she can then tap in as a resource when she's 15 to 17. And when she's 15 to 17, when she's 20, you know, 20, 23, her relationship with men will be very, very different than it is when she's 15. And so I need to make sure that my life and my actions and my mentality and the way I engage with her is Mm -hmm. different at 15, 17, because it's modeling what she'll be looking for and, 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 and dealing with at, at, at that age. And so like for you, it's amazing because your son, as he goes through, you know, 10, 12, and he hits puberty and he goes on beyond that, mm-hmm. his confidence with women, his understanding of, of moderation and not being, you know, um, and, and being sober 
around these topics of um, nudity and uh, women and 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 these things. It's going. He's going to be so different than than the kids around him because he has because of the experiences he's having right now. He's going to not be afraid to. Um, I see him as a leader in the school because if he's already going to Comic Con and he's around all of these different types of people who are expressing themselves in different kinds of ways, and he has parents like you, then he's going to be at fifteen you know, like 10, 15, 20 years old as someone who accepts people, you know? Yeah. And, and that's it's, what, we, what we want, yeah. the ultimate thing. It's like to be accepting of, of everyone, you know? Because this world is full of every single flavor and color, you know? Yeah. And and then to figure out a way how to honor that too, you know? And so mm-hmm. um, I, I, I just, I, I always love seeing you and him in the little pictures because I, I just, mm-hmm. I just... You know, let me let me let me say this. Uh, years ago, I always wanted to have kids, mm-hmm. and there was a time when I was in college where I got in, involved in, in in church, and um, and at some point in my life, I was like, "Oh my God, the end of the world is coming!" You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and I used to say, "Why the hell would I have kids if the end of the world was coming?" Mm-hmm. And uh, and I met this one religious guy and uh and he kind of allowed me to start thinking a little bit different that maybe the end of the world is not coming right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and then and then i that led to a different thought which was wait a second i want to have kids because my kids are the solution if i raise them right if i raise them to love if i raise them to lead by raised them to care for other people, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. then they become the hope. Yeah, the new world. Yeah, and so when I see parents like you and and your wife, and I see your child, I can so clearly see what the future holds, and um, and that just makes me so excited that there are people like my kids, your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a dear, dear friend and. In, in, Puerto Rico 20 years ago I met him and I met his son when he was I guess probably about eight nine years old and I would call him the governor I still call him governor today (laughs) because he would just walk around and like he had authority at such a young age he's super intelligent you know oh nice very very aware and now he's uh, an industrial designer Um, he went off to you know so, so he's he's doing very very well in life um but when seeing great parenting, it just it just gives it just fills my whole heart with, with so much hope and life and light uh, for the future. No matter the crap that we're going through now, we're, there's always going to be crap. But, yeah, um, of course, there's always there's always going to be bad stuff. Or I call it crap. You can call it bad stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, Alex, uh, if you were going to sit down with a with an artist young artist Mm -hmm. or an old artist and you Mm -hmm. and and they asked they came to you and said oh great yoda of art um lead me guide me um Mm. what would be something that you would encourage artists to really um uh, begin to focus on uh yeah um themselves uh their work um many students or artists or friends so you come and be like you know i want to be a good artist <laughs> what? and i'm like okay are you drawing are you painting they are not doing anything so just just like nike logo you know just do it do it and concentrate on your art on your work there's always going to be external factors that are going to slow you down discourage you my biggest advice is just keep going keep going Hmm. if you know if you build it they'll come it actually works if you have good work um people will actually notice you so just work keep focusing on your work uh put the effort it sounds uh 
it sounds <laughs> obvious, you're right? Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds very obvious, but you you not imagine how how many people just like people tell me like how do you get followers, Alex? Like uh there's pages where you can buy followers. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, it's gotta be organic. Yeah. And um because if the work isn't good, then you get all those new followers and then you're just like, oh, there's 10,000 more people who don't like my work. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. It's true. Uh, yeah. when, you buy, when you buy followers, what happens? Like they're just a bunch of like, and they're, they, there's just people that are in charge of uh, creating like thousands of accounts, fake accounts, and they yeah. all like you. There's no interaction. So please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. We want the quality in the context and um yeah, invest in yourself, you know. Um take a class, take a trip, go to a museum. If oh. somebody wanted to work with you and, and and have you train them in something, what are what what would you train them in? Well, first if they are interested in, in drawing and painting, then they, yeah, that's 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 what I do. I I try to teach them the the one two three of painting and drawing. And uh, like, like we talk, it's all about drawing. Like if you want to paint or illustrate, you gotta draw a lot. So mm. make sure you have a a big stack of sketchbooks <laughs> filled up. Now. Um... If you were going to give someone a challenge, let's say a sketchbook challenge, mm-hmm. okay? I don't know if you have one in your head. I have one I'm thinking about right now. But um, what kind of challenge would you give them? Mm. Like for me, it's all personal. Like I have to see who you are mm-hmm. and what you're lacking. And let's say if you're lacking drawing hands, just draw 1,000 hands. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Yeah, it's gotcha. Just, just brutal, you know. Just, just go for it. Yep. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, just a challenge of like, give yourself two weeks and fill a sketchbook. You know, just yeah. fill it. You know, <laughs> and if it's all with hands, if that's where you need to be, then yeah, then do that. You know, just um, giving yourself a a visual um, completion. You know, like okay, just fill this thing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I would say I would add to that. Sorry, uh, mm-hmm. I would add just you know we 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 get too caught up with thinking of of you know the idea of making bad drawings. Mm-hmm. And there's people that they they make one good drawing, more or less good drawing, and and that's it. You know they they're not drawing anymore. So the thing is, uh, for my students, I recommend them to draw. Like I don't care if your drawing is good or bad. You know, if it's bad, just draw it, draw next to it, draw a better face or a better hand. It's it's a matter of having your hand having fun, your hand moving and dancing, yes. you know? That's it's that movement. Dancing. That that's nice. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, man. Because, I, I, you know, looking at your work, you have this beautiful line work that's going on and um, that's exactly what it is. Uh, you can you can feel the dance that you're, you're, you're capturing. Um yeah, I like I like a lot of rhythm and and drawings and and paintings. Do you listen to music when you're working? Yeah, I I like all sorts of stuff. I like classic music and rock music and electronic music. Like whatever, you know, whatever is the feeling at the moment. Mm-hmm. I'll that on. And do 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 you do you see your work change depending on the music that you're listening to? If there's a specific mood, then yeah. Like mm-hmm. if there's something kind of violent, I'll put on some uh, very heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it actually works. You know, actually yeah, works. yeah, yeah. I'm a very emotional artist, and actually, the movie I'm working for right now, I was uh, hired because of the, I guess the director. They they saw some kind of, uh, they saw that that I'm very emotional with my work. So I have that subtlety that they they want for this movie. Nice, nice, very very cool. So, as you have this career, 
as an artiste, um, who would you, if you could give a shout out to, to, to mm-hmm. three people, who, who would you give a shout out to that help you, uh, do, do you, you know, to be, uh, to be this artist? Yeah. Um, well, number one would be my, my wife. Like she is so supportive. Mm-hmm. Way too supportive. I would say like, <laughs> too supportive. like, dude, like it's like 90% of my models are her friends. I'm like, she's like always recommending me like you should do that. which is kind of bizarre for, you know, for mm-hmm. some people. And, uh, she's amazing. Like she, she taught me how to cook. It was because of her that I cook now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hated cooking before, but now she like she taught me so much care and love. So I, 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 I actually, I think it was a trap actually, because you know, like she taught me how to cook. Now I'm the cook. Now I'm the fish. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you can do it now. <laughs> I'm gonna go hunt some models. You yeah, just gather yeah. the food in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. No, she's amazing. Like, she's everything. Like, I. And really, where did you guys meet? I met her on, fa- on Facebook. Oh, really? That's I awesome, her. man. I you stalked her for a year. <laughs> and yes, guys, it actually works. I can, we can do some other podcasts some other time. And I'll, That's I'll awesome, you. man. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Um, and is she Latina as well? Yeah, yeah. We met in Peru. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the thing is, she was, she is, she was a resident when I met her. So when, she got pregnant. She didn't want to lose the residency, so she, that's why we're here now. Mm. So did, and, uh, okay. Yeah. So our son, our son was born, born here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we we have a life here now. That's nice. And do you ever go back to Peru? Uh not as much. Not as much. Uh, I don't like moving that much. I'm not okay. more. Of a, so you rather everybody come visit you? I'm like a mushroom that stays <laughs> there and likes being there. <laughs> a mushroom. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So your wife is one of the uh, people that you would give a shout out to. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. And um, lately, I'm I'm talking a lot with my friend. I mentioned him in this. Uh, his name is uh, John Mahoney. Mm-hmm. He's a uh, he's a teacher at CalArts. He's releasing his art book, Centropa, as the second book. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's amazing. He, he he's very supportive of what I do. He's he's bought me some original work, and like I try to support him as much as I can too. So and I I, I really appreciate his work. Uh, who he is as a person. He's got a, a very cool story. That uh, we'll let I'm him sure. know. We'll we'll bring him on the podcast and yeah, have a yeah, conversation. Yeah, I'm, sure, with him. I'm sure he'll be he'll be thrilled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, all right, give us one more. Give us one more. Um, so I, I just finished working with them like some time ago, and they're my sponsor, De La Ronnie. Okay, and, and what De is Ronnie. that? They, they're they're a brand, they get just they got they just got bought by uh Dixon, the the Dixon company, and uh, but they yeah, they they always help me out with uh materials and stuff that they're amazing to work with. Nice, good nice. brand. Like, I, I love their sketchbooks, so mm-hmm. that's why I uh I went to their website. I'm uh, I'm showing them my sketchbooks. I'm like, dude, I love your stuff, and they're like, hey, do you wanna do you want us to sponsor you? And I was like, heck yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So they sponsor you with materials or cash and materials or well, materials. They they Did send me like boxes of stuff and I uh, oh, that's awesome I uh I do artwork for them like uh, with their stuff you know yeah yeah post it that's, on Instagram and what and then you tag them and all that stuff yeah and mm-hmm. that's cool that's cool um would you is that something you would encourage other artists to do is look out uh, like to um reach out to art supply places and and it's it's a good yeah you know when I got that when I mentioned that I was being sponsored, I got so many friends. I mean, like, how do you do it? <laughs> but like, they are how do, how do I say this without sounding like a douche? Like, the their work was not at that level yet. Yeah. So I'm like, you gotta work on yourself first, and that's mm-hmm. that's that's what I said. That's the advice I gave you guys. Uh, and then they unfriended you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, you gotta work that. I mean, really, like you. I don't know. I can't. I can't say it enough. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just the reality, you know. I mean, people think you know. There's an entitled mentality where it's like, well, I I draw, so therefore I you, you should buy my artwork, or I should have this, or I should have that. And it's like, well, f- you you move a pencil on a paper, and you make marks. You you know, and so the reality is the marketplace wants a certain level of quality. Especially if they want you, you know, if they want you to represent them, um, part of you being great is it makes them look great. And if you're not producing something that's great, then you're going to make their product not look great. And mm-hmm. they're, they need to make a wise business decision. So they're not going to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there has to just be a, an honesty and reality uh, a lot of times, especially with artists, because we're so good at fantasizing. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's and, true. And it's and it, it hurts, but it is just what it is. Um, all right, man. Well, you know, before I ask you how people can get in contact with you, I have to ask you my favorite question in my in the most important part of this conversation, which is, uh, what what do you like to eat? Or maybe I should say, what do you like to cook? Since that's your new job. <laughs> Yeah, um, I cook a lot of stews and uh, spaghetti and mm. soups. My my wife loves soups. Uh, yeah. So I make. What soups. kind of soups do you make? Uh, I I like doing the broccoli and cheddar uh, soup. Oh, uh, nice. There's a uh, chickpea. What what is that? Chickpeas. Yeah, yeah chickpea. Yep. With a uh, spinach and tomato. There's it's very good. Oh, and that's uh, a soup? Yeah, it's a soup. Uh, lentil soup is very good, too. Mm, man. A chickpea, spinach, uh, and tomato sounds really good. Is that more like a tomato soup, or is that kind of like a... a, like a yeah, it's it got like, like a, a tomato base. It's like, oh, a, okay. like a tomato-based uh, soup. You know what uh, tastes really good with the tomato soup? Um, mm-hmm. Artichokes. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Artichokes are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then what kind of stews do you, you like making? You know what? Uh, my 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 father-in-law, he's got this story, this backstory that when he, he got married to my uh, mother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, he didn't know how to cook as well. And then so he now he's like this amazing chef, uh, chef mm. like he just he is mind blowing. He, he's really good. And so uh, I was inspired by that story. So I was like, hmm, I'm gonna make my own dish then. <laughs> like I'm gonna try to make my own. Mm-hmm. Thing like my my masterpiece so i have this uh stew i make which uh has potatoes you can use either uh chicken or um beef um and it's got a mushroom base Ooh! so and it's got sausage and i don't know i i really like it now when you eat that (laughs) because of the mushrooms Uh is it flavorful or do you happen to have these strange trips afterwards (laughs) afterwards <laughs> oh <laughs> no it's all flavorful it's all okay okay yeah that's awesome man that's awesome um I, I i i don't make soups but uh at least often um but i do make uh a stew and mm-hmm. it's made from um turkey meat and then all these different kinds of beans and oh. it has a tomato base and uh, you know, you put some onions and ba- you know, basil and stuff like that in there. Yeah. Um, but I make it because it's it's mainly like a high protein mm-hmm. uh, meal. Um, and it's strange. Like I'll make a whole big thing of it, and I'll eat it for like a week, week and a half, right? <laughs> like a, a week or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is about the third day in, something happens. I don't know if it goes rotten and I just think it tastes good, but um, something happens where, where all the flavors just break down and like merge and it just becomes freaking incredible. What, what, you know, put it in the refrigerator for like three days and it's just, you know, eat. that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's the same thing that happens with my, I guess it's too, it's just get better when you put them on the fridge and the next day they just get more flavor, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, and then just yeah, it just 
there comes a day where it's like, what the hell? Like, this is like 10 times better than when I first made it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. oh i'm not the only one that's, yeah that's pretty cool that's yeah man so um i'll encourage you to watch there's a movie if you haven't seen it it's called tortilla soup uh, have you ever oh. seen this movie i uh, know but i like tortilla soup so i'm out uh, uh, me too <laughs> you like it with jalapenos <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh yummy <laughs> um it's a beautiful movie it's about a father mm-hmm. um i believe the the mother passes away and he has, I uh, think, three daughters. And so okay. they had this tradition where he's a chef. And so mm-hmm. every Sunday or whatever, he cooks this big meal. And so a lot of the movie is around this meal and him basically coping with life that his daughters are leaving and, you know, yeah. and, and his wife passed away. Um, <clears throat> he's getting older. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and in a weird way, it's like his family is leaving, but he's using food to, to draw them back. You know, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's such a beautiful movie. It's a you know, obviously a a, a Latin movie, um, but but American, you know, like yeah, it, it's you know, it's it's a good movie. It's probably on Netflix or something. But um, I, I have a feeling that if you and your your wife and probably even some friends got together and cooked a good meal and had that movie, it'd be one of it'd be a really nice night uh, yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good, man. It sounds like a good movie and a good idea too. Hey guys, how are you? Um, I know for 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 a while before I, I hooked up with uh, some lessons with uh, with Victor, um, I had been seeing like bumping into some of his videos on uh, analyzing paintings, and um, I found them to be super super uh, fascinating to to kind of think about because I, I quite honestly even when I was creating my own work I never thought about uh, a lot of the things that he talked that he talked about and uh, it, it was a while for me to um, to kind of just go ahead and uh, and get some classes with him and talk with him um, it's just every time I ran into some of these intriguing videos it was him um, this is uh, quite a few years before uh, he was doing um, the coaching, um, and so I had to. I just had a. I was intrigued so much that I just had to talk to him, and uh, I finally did. And um, let me say that there hasn't been a plan or a a a painting that I've started that I don't hear some of his awesome wisdom um there was there was a struggle before that or an unsure um way of creating my work um which don't get me wrong i was pretty confident in a lot of the work that i was creating but there was a sort of unsureness about where to place things and how i can make things make more sense and um uh, after uh, training with with Victor for for a while, uh, this was a, at least what a couple of years ago now. Um, I haven't looked back. Um, I feel way more comfortable in being able to place um, place objects, place uh, uh, lines, uh, so that the work makes more sense. So that it can really uh, tell a story, not only through the objects or the subject matter, but the way in which they flow together. Um, I am so, so grateful, uh, for that. Um, yeah, yeah. I not disappointed at all. In just 30 days, the core 80 experience teaches you to decode the intentional design underneath great masterpieces. Through video lessons, assignments, and feedback, you learn to recognize the underlining structures like thrust maps, echoes, and gamuts that give master compositions substance and gravitas. Knowing how master artists and illustrators compose their artwork unlocks your ability to give your artwork more meaning and energy. Enroll today and get a seven-day, no-hassle, money-back guarantee at core80.com.